Welcome back to Candy Adventures. I'm Chris. And I'm Elizabeth. And we had to get out of the truck to film this because this old 7.3 just rattle clacks away and you couldn't hear anything on the audio. <laughs> so we're here in the beautiful mountains of Western North Carolina to film a video series that we've been wanting to do for a very long time. And we have dabbled in it when we lived in Washington. We have headed to where there has been some Bigfoot sightings that we have read about on the internet. But we're bringing it here to North Carolina. We are on a hunt for Bigfoot. Or just really because Bigfoot doesn't have one definition of what Bigfoot is, but all the myths and legends of giants and big creatures, big hominid humanoid creatures in the Americas. So North Carolina and the Appalachian Mountains are actually really big hotspots for Bigfoot sightings and legends going back even before Native Americans for giants in the area. So we're going to take it back to the Cherokee Indians, specifically this video, and we're going to explore the legend uh, or the history of Judicola. And Judicola was a, a giant that was said to have lived in this area. So first we're going to head to the main spot, the proof of Judicola, which is the Judicola Rock. Let's go. So we've made it here to the mountains of Western North Carolina on a pretty chilly day. There's actually snow on top of the mountains this morning. And we've come to Judicola Rock. And Judicola Rock is the densest site of petroglyphs on the east coast of the United States. And this is officially where our Bigfoot story today is going to begin. This is Judicola Rock. This big piece of soapstone located here in Jackson County, North Carolina was donated by a local farmer some years ago, this acre here, to help preserve this stone and to give public free access to it. And the stone, nobody exactly knows what it's for. Uh, some people hypothesize that this could be a map of the stars. Some people think that this could be a map of the local area. But the reason we're here, and most fascinating to us, is that right here, where I'm pointing with my hand, is a seven-fingered human a uh, seven fingered humanoid handprint that is supposed to have been from the giant called judicola so judicola is the english pronunciation of a cherokee word for their equivalent to bigfoot the direct translation for judicola is slant-eyed giant so this is sort of linked in this area to stories of Bigfoot. They have similar legends, um, similar contexts of a large being that's a humanoid-like person living in the mountainous regions of North Carolina. And it said that Judicola was a protector of the area and you had to ask permission uh, to go into certain areas. And then if you did not ask permission, then you would be reprimanded by this uh, uh, supernatural giant. And it's thought that this giant line that runs the bottom here is possibly the Tuckasegee River and that some of these kind of road looking uh, etchings into the stone are possibly some of the tributaries to the Tuckasegee. And we would love to find, you can still find to this day, weirs, fishing weirs that are still left into the stream that have been there for who knows how long, maybe thousands of years. So we're gonna see if we can go find somewhere on this river uh, where we can find a weir to find some evidence of some older Cherokee culture. And then after we head and try to find some old fishing weirs, we are going to head up to... The Devil's Courthouse, which is a mountain that is said to be his judgment seat, where people that he was reprimanding, they were judged there. And there's also supposed to be a cave that was his dwelling, but it's inside of the mountain. And something I can't get away from that I've never heard mentioned anything is also ties in to the area is I'm a huge fan of animation if you've ever seen the television show Squidbillies <laughs> that hand down there looks an awful lot like the Squidbillies who also mind you the show takes place in Appalachia Sasquatch is built for the rugged outdoors anyhow Sasquatch strong baby 
Is there a tie? <laughs> is there a tie there? Is there some sort of Illuminati, Freemasonic Lodge order, something that someone's trying to tell us? I don't know, but I'll let you be the judge. <laughs> no, Judah Cull is the judge. Oh, that's right. Judah Cull is the judge. <laughs> but I'm a believer. Nothing is impossible. I'm a believer. I believe. I believe, I believe. That's a big nasty hole. So as always, uh, much unlike my stepfather, we have provided. And we didn't lie to you, and we're here to show you a, a Cherokee Indian fishing weir. And what a weir is, it's either a V or uh, can be W-shaped rock formation left over in the river. And what they used to do is if you have the flow of the river going this way and you put uh, a V in the river, you're going to keep all the fish, kind of collect them in and uh, funnel them into a wooden basket that they would build. Now, all that's left now, there's no more of the wood structure, of course, but what is left is all the stones that they've put in the river. And these, this could be could have been here from thousands of years and it could be, you know, slowly rebuilt it. Uh, no one really exactly knows. And what's really cool is this could have been a fishing weir that could have been put in by the Cherokee people that had to have had permission from Judicola. And because that main line on the bottom of that rock kind of bifurcates the rock into kind of a blank area almost below it could be where you weren't allowed to hunt or fish on the other side of. And now we have this um, really fascinating that this could be indicated on that stone, or at least this river itself, the Tuckasegee could be indicated on that stone, and this could be tied to Judicola. So next, we're going to get back in this big, loud uh, diesel pickup truck and go up the mountain and see if we can find where Judicola would have held court back in the day and see if we can find some more remnants to uh, support our hypothesis that giants were here in the Americas uh, some time ago. What I just learned when we were researching for this video is that um, like some of these weirs, they've dated to Paleo-Indians, which would be the time of Mastodons, which were like the woolly mammoth equivalent for North America. And they've found bones from Canada all the way down to Mexico for Mastodons. So talk about giants in this area. Some that we even have actual evidence of, like bones and stuff. So. <laughs> All right, let's get up to the courthouse and uh, might even do a little fishing. Uh, and it might have to be delayed till tomorrow, which is cool because we have our house with us. So we might stop and make some lunch alongside the river and I might get to cast a couple times on the way up. So let's head up the mountain and see if we can find the courthouse of old Judicola. Come on, fam. You don't think you're a fighter, but I know you are. And you are. Yep. <laughs> and that's how the Blue Ridge Parkway does the winter time. All right, so we we're gonna try to get up here and show you guys Judicola Rock and actually walk on it. Uh, luckily, we were able to get just a little bit of drone footage, uh, not on the parkway boundary because uh, the National Park Service and Hates myself drones. do not have a good working relationship because anytime there's a little frost on the roadway or anything, what they do is they take your public road and they turn it into this. Look how clean and clear that road is and it's closed because there was a small flurry this morning and so this road will be shut down for who knows how long. Um, so that keeps us from being able to show you Judicola Rock. We got it as close to it as we could with the drone because uh, you can't fly a drone from Blue Ridge Parkway property, so we had to go down a different road and a public road and fly from there. We couldn't get very close because our drone sucks and <laughs> it can't fight the wind at this elevation. Um, <laughs> but that was Judicola Rock up there and we were going to show you. Yes, that was uh, known as the Devil's Courthouse. And from where this gate is right now, it's one mile. And by the time we get there, it's going to be dark. And then you still have to kind of hike up to the top. So we don't have enough time to even walk it. Yeah, um, not scared of the dark, but uh, our cameras do not work in the dark whatsoever. No. So um, anyway, uh, thanks for joining us today. And this starts our 
beginning journeys of kind of looking up giants in the continental United States. And we'd love to even go check out South America and Canada and Alaska, but a lot of giant human myths around this area. And I hope you guys had a good time and learned something new or at least had fun. Or enter entertained, whichever. All right, so we'll see you guys next time. And oh yeah, we have merch. So <laughs> if you're interested and it's, you're doing a dirty bulk this season and need a hoodie, <laughs> check this out. Or if you need a t-shirt. Yeah, we have women's tees, tank tops, men's t-shirts, whatever you like. Check out these custom designs, all designed by her on our iPad and then printed uh, through a third party uh, printer and shipped straight to your door. So check out some of that cool merch and we'll see you guys next time. But I'm a believer, nothing is impossible. I'm a believer, I believe. I'm a believer, I believe. You don't think you're a fighter.